former U.S. President Donald Trump will rake in about $4 billion when Truth Social begins trading, at least on paper. That should help him with his legal costs as he prepares to face a criminal hush money case and penalties in a civil business fraud case. William Denslow breaks it down for us from New York. It's a daily commute the former president was hoping to avoid. But starting on April 15th, when jury selection begins, Donald Trump will stand trial here in Lower Manhattan. He faces 34 felony counts for falsifying business records. The case revolves around allegations he paid hush money to a porn star ahead of the 2016 presidential election. Charges he denies. This is election interference. That's all it is. Election interference. And it's a disgrace. will obviously be appealing. But this is a pure case of voter intimidation and election interference. And it shouldn't be allowed to happen. Early this month, federal prosecutors released more than 100,000 documents tied to an investigation into Michael Cohen, Trump's one-time lawyer, who's now slated to be a star witness against Trump. Trump's legal team said the handling of the documents amounted to prosecutorial misconduct and wanted the case tossed or delayed. Judge Juan Machan has previously granted a 30-day delay to the trial, but at Monday's hearing declined to push it any further. This is the first of Trump's four criminal cases to go to trial. For prosecutors, it's been a long time coming. No amount of money and no amount of power changes that enduring American principle. But the former president was handed a major win in a separate legal battle on Monday. Last month, the judge found Trump liable for fraud, and he was ordered to pay over $450 million. Failure to pay could result in Trump having his bank accounts frozen or assets seized. But an appeals court has ruled that they'll now accept a bond of $175 million. He has 10 days to pay as he continues with the appeals process. I'll post either $175 billion in cash or bonds or security or whatever is necessary uh, very quickly within the 10 days. And I thank the appellate division for acting quickly. But Judge Andorra is a disgrace to this country, and this should not be allowed to happen. With November's presidential election approaching, the former president will look to turn his court battles into an opportunity to court voters. William Denslow, CGTN, New York. And to talk more about how these cases will impact Donald Trump's finances and potentially his run for the White House, let's bring in Paul Pelletier. He's an attorney, a former federal prosecutor, and adjunct law profess professor excuse me, at the George Washington University Law School. Thanks so much for joining us, sir. Let's start Thanks, with his civil case. How big a reprieve was this for the former president? Instead of having to come up with $454 million or secure a bond, he now has 10 days to come up with less than half, $175 million, and then he has the ability to appeal. I'd call that a win. What about you? Well, you know, if, if I lost $175, $175 million at the end of an appeal, I don't think I would see that as a win. So. He was going to be able to appeal regardless. So what all this was was it prevented it prevents the attorney general from seizing his assets pending appeal. So he was always going to be able to appeal. Now this this allows him to proceed apace with the appeal without worrying about his assets being seized. It looks like from all those who know that. He has the ability to pay a $175 million bond. And as you know, all that does is that it guarantees that at the end of the appeal, if the judgment is affirmed, then he will at least be able to pay $175 million to the state of New York at, at the very least, because that's guaranteed now. And so from your experience, I'm wondering how unusual is it for the bond amount to have been modified so significantly by an appeals court? Do you think the initial punishment was excessive? Well, so what the Court of Appeals Court of Appeals didn't issue an opinion, so we don't know exactly what they were thinking. But we do know that President Trump's legal team said that the amount of the fraud penalty um, that was issued by the trial judge and ordered by the trial judge was way too high. This may be some indication that the Court of Appeals agrees. Again, we're just reading the tea leaves here. We don't know really what's going to happen, but it is not unusual at all 
for courts of appeals on appeal to reduce the amount of bond that someone has to pay, particularly when we're talking numbers that were as high as almost a half a billion dollars. So the court, um, I think, did what a lot of courts do in that they split the baby a little bit less than half, but certainly uh, a reprieve for former President Trump. Mm. If that bond was not reduced today, what would have happened? It's not like Letitia James was sending her people down to Trump Tower in New York to put a big, you know, padlock on the entrance, right? There is a whole process to having his assets seized. Yeah, for sure. Now, what the process usually entails is the process usually entails that with respect to real estate, that the state puts a lien on the real estate. And all that lien means is that the, Mr. Trump, in this, in this case, wouldn't be able to sell or alienate the property or leverage the property um, during the pendency of the appeal. So it just prevents liens from being placed on the properties. And Lord knows the bond company may put a lien on these properties, but it certainly prevents a half a billion dollar lien on these properties. So that's sort of where, where we are. It doesn't prevent, she would not march in and start selling things, but she would certainly put liens on them. Mm. On to the other big news today, a judge setting the trial date for his criminal hush money case for April 15th, despite attempts by Trump's team to delay it. How quickly do you expect that case to proceed? Will a jury be picked quickly in your opinion? And how impartial can that jury be being picked from New York? How impartial can it really be? Well, remember, in, in, in every case, we look, I had over 100 jury trials in federal court, and it is not difficult at all to pick an impartial jury because what what is a process called voir dire, where the defense attorney and the prosecutors get to question the jury pa panel or the jury veneer, all the people that come in to serve on the jury, to probe those prejudices. So in my experience, it's not unusual at all to have people with prejudices, and you find that out in the jury selection process, and you will get an impartial jury, for sure, in New York. Remember, um, New York has a very large Republican population as well, maybe not Manhattan so much, but at the end of the day, um, lawyers in the court have all the tools necessary to pick an impartial jury. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. And then uh, moving on, Trump is nothing if not a man of juxtapositions. His truth social media platform is set to go public as soon as Tuesday. And, you know, on paper, the deal via blank check company will mean a gain of as much as $4 billion potentially for Trump, putting him on Bloomberg's billionaires index for the first time. Go figure. But he can't buy or sell again shares for six months. So it won't really help him with his civil bond. But how can it help him? Can he use any of his gains to help fund his campaign? And can prosecutors go after any of that money in fines well, in some of his other cases, per se? Well, first, first of all, it's a, um, he, his history is that he doesn't use his own personal funds to fund his campaign. That's been his history. That's been his life. He does not use his own money to fund whatever he needs to fund. That's number one. And he didn't do it in his last election in a real way, even though he said he would. So I don't think that that's where it's going to be. Remember, this will be a public company, a publicly traded company. So the government can go after his shares in that company. But again, once it goes public, people will have to buy shares in it. And then we'll know what the value is once it goes public. And, and once that happens, I, I'm pretty sure the value isn't going to be what they say it is, and but 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 we'll see. But but again, the government can go after his shares in that company, but they can't go after the company itself. All or right, asset. we are out of time. Thank you for that insightful conversation, Paul Pelletier. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.